Hello everyone, Koto Studios here, back with another Bible Talk video. This Bible Talk video is going to be a special one. This Bible Talk video is going to be on, who is Jesus? I mean, really, many people wonder that. I mean, many people may assume they know Jesus. Uh, sure, he was a son of God, born in a manger, this and that. Which, you're, you're not wrong, that is the truth. Um, but he's... He's more than just basically another prophet. He's he was an actual born flesh son of God. See, um Jesus came in the flesh to know what it means to truly be human or God that which came into becoming Jesus. Jesus is the son of God and it's amazing all the miracles that he performed for us people, and he came to die for us so that we don't go to hell, or he came. Now, people back then, you there you could go to heaven, but in order to do that, you had to have a, like a sacrifice, like a blood sacrifice, like a sacrifice in a lamb or something, not a, not a human being, but an animal. Uh, but Jesus came and died on the cross so we wouldn't have to do that anymore. All we need to do is pray to him and accept him as our Lord and Savior. I got some scriptures I want to read to you in Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 through 11. But before I get into that, that's this is like talking about, th this whole thing is saying what Jesus did to enter into Jerusalem before one week before he died on the cross. But before I get into that, I want to talk a few things. Now, I could make a whole separate video on this. Or you can look it up for yourself, read it in the Bible, watch videos about it. But Jesus performed many miracles. One of his first, I think his first ever miracle he performed for the people was he turned water into wine. Which I said in a, a past video of mine that... Back then, wine was different than it is today. They turned wine into an alcoholic drink in the present day. But back then, it was just like grape juice. So, it's a sin to drink modern day wine or to drink alcohol. But back then, it was okay to drink wine because it was nothing more than grape juice. But not only he turned water into wine, he also uh, healed the sick, uh, made people see again when they were blind. He even rose people from the dead, such as Lazarus, for example. Uh, he raised uh, a few, yeah, a few people from the dead before. It's it's not just himself, and it's amazing, you know. It, God could God could do all things. And actually, I have a well, I, I'll pull that up in a little while, but. There's nothing that God can't do. If we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we repent of our sins and ask for forgiveness, we will be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. You just need to have faith that you're forgiven. But yeah, if you want to learn a truth uh, about all these different miracles and stories and things that uh, God has done, I could have uh, a few links uh in the description or something, or you could go to my playlist on my YouTube channel. I think I got a playlist set up of many things that Jesus has done. Uh, I think it's titled "What Would Jesus Do?" I think. Uh, I'll say if not, I could uh, pull up some more. Uh, but go check them out if uh, if there are on there. If not, I'll pull up, put them on there in a little while. But we need to have faith in what God and Jesus can do because there's nothing that they can't do. Um, and uh, I know the devil would try to pull you down. And you just got to remember, I think it says this in the Bible as well. I'm glad to find it. But the verse says, if God could be for me, who could be against me? Got to remember that God is for us and he'll always be there for us. But anyway, the scriptures I had, I wanted to read to you was Matthew chapter 20, ver sorry, chapter, Matthew chapter 21, verse Verse 1 through 11. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, 
Then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and the straightaway ye shall find an ass tied, uh, and a cow colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if, sorry, and if any man say out unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightaway he will send them. And this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and the colt of full of an ass. And disciples went uh went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon, and very great multitude, spread their garments, and the way others colt others cut down branches from the trees, and the straight sorry, strode them in the way. Sorry, I can't, I have a trouble reading here. And the multitudes that went before and that followed carried, saying, Hasana to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hasana the highest. And when he was come unto Jerusalem, all the cities was moved, saying, Who is this? The multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. That, that I read there, um, let me, Hasana, I believe that me. I heard in one translation, it means the Savior, which Jesus is the Savior. He's the one who died on the cross and we and save our soul or or that we may be forgiven for our sins as long as we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and pray to him and ask for forgiveness. But anyway, when it said the word ass, it does not mean a person's butt. It's talking about a donkey. And that's I'm, I'm, I hope that you all knew that. If you all were thinking the other thing, then I... That's not what I meant, okay? Don't be dirty-minded or nothing, but just keep in mind it, it does talk about an actual animal, not not a person's behind. See, that scripture that I just read to you, or the scriptures, I should say, is a representation of, like, the, the one entering in, everyone praising him and loving him, and that's the way it's going to kind of be like when Jesus returns again. This time he won't be on a donkey, but uh, as far as I know, he won't be. But when he returns again, it's going to be people who know him and actually love him will praise and holler and shout and glory and love saying that Jesus has returned to take us out of here. And we're all going to be raptured all off this earth and into heaven. We're going to be gone for seven years and then we're going to return we're going to come back, and after that, God's going to fix everything. As far as I know, there's many people disagree. Some people say this and that. Many people have different representations. But I'm going by what the Bible says. And I just, I all I need to do is have faith, you know? I believe in my heart that Jesus will return and that I am forgiven. And I hope that you all are too. If not, I'm going to pray for you all at the end of this. But we need to remember... That God loves us very much. Jesus is the son of God. He performed many miracles. He took a beating for us so we wouldn't have to. When he died on the cross, see, he lived a life without sin. So when he died on the cross, God couldn't even look at him. Because when he, he sacrificed himself on that cross, and all of our sins, past, present, and future... We're just thrown upon Jesus. He, as if he committed all the sins, but he didn't. He took all the sins that we committed and laid it on himself. He was so, had so much sin on him 
that God looked away, couldn't even look at his own son. And by doing this, he were forgiven for our sins. Then three days later, he rose from the dead. See, it's like, I mean, if you ask for forgiveness for your sins, your sins were thrown upon him. You just, and it's a good thing. Don't think it's uh, bad, you know. It's a good thing that, that, that he did that for us. So we may be saved so we could go to heaven. So uh, we could go to heaven and not hell. As long as you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven as long as you accepted Jesus into your heart and into your life. That is the most important thing. Jesus loves us, and we need to love him. And it's, man, it's like I can't even, I mean, I just thank God Every day for everything that he's done for us. And we all need to be that way. We need to love God and praise him and give him the glory. I try to do this every day. To give God at least two hours and 40 minutes every day. I said this before, but in case y'all don't know, I'll say it again. Um, you know, you, you God is grateful for any time you can give him. But I was once told that it's good to give God at least 10% of your day. And if you do the math, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, blah, blah, blah. About 10% of the day is about 2 hours and 40 minutes. And you got to give God at least that time, you know. You need to... I mean, he's grateful for any time you give him. Even if you even if you don't have much time, like you have to work or something, even praying to him, God will be grateful for it. As long as you praise him and love him, give him time. And during my two hours and 40 minutes, I read my Bible, I take notes, I listen to preaching, I pray, I praise God, I, I listen to some music sometimes, I sing a little... I always do something for the Lord because I accepted him, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior, and I need to be there for him. And if I ever disobey God or or something, or I get distracted, get into the flesh, something like that, I always repent of my sins. And it says in the Bible that he'll always forgive us. You know, even if we commit the same sin over and over and over and over again, if you ask for forgiveness for your sins... And accept him, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, and you repent, he will forgive you. And, I mean, you need to at least, you need to try not to sin again. But if you commit the same sin again, he will forgive you. But don't take that as in, you could just sin all you want and then repent later. Because we don't know when Jesus is coming back. I mean, you need to try not to sin. You need to be forgiven for your sins. If you're forgiven for your sins, some people could quit sinning. Just like that. But then there's other people who struggle and uh, can't do it as easily, even if they are forgiven of their sins. So if you're struggling with sin, but you ask for forgiveness for your sins prior, don't think that you're not forgiven. You are forgiven of your sins You just, if you truly believe it. It's just that you may be one of those people who have trouble uh, quitting their sins. Believe it or not, I'm one of those people. We just need to have faith and love God and keep his commandments and remember his word. And it's it's amazing of all the things that God has done for us. We just need to be there and have him in our hearts and love him more than anything else. I know I'm rambling here. I just want to talk to you all about the amazing gifts and glory and glorify God. And Jesus, you know, it's wonderful. But just remember, God will always forgive you as long as you accepted him as your Lord and Savior and you repent. And it's just, if you're for, I mean, if you're a child of God, heaven is only one breath away. It just... Either either you'll either by the grave or the rapture, either way we get to heaven, it's gonna be wonderful. 
I, I said in a comment recently, talk about that country song, Born to Die. Uh, I could actually probably pull it up for you right now. Uh, read it to you exactly what I said. I'll probably even have it flashed up on screen somewhere. But um, I, I, I said uh, that we're not born to die. I'll, I'll pull it up for you right now. Don't worry, I'll make sure to cover up all the other comments uh, if I do flash this up on screen. Uh, that way no one will get mad at me for showing their comments without their permission. But I was, it was on this, uh, it was in the comment section of this video, uh, of that song, Born to Die, from Kelly, let me look, Kelly Clarkson. Uh, it was that song from the Trolls World Tour movie. I've never seen the movie. I've only seen clips. But here's this. Here's my comment right here if you want to see it. It says right here, um, We're not born to die. We're born to live. Death is nothing but a doorway to eternal life. If you're forgiven for your sins and you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But it says in the Bible, One day there will be a generation without death. God will soon fix everything. Now, if you don't agree with my comment, that's okay. That's your opinion. Uh, I just felt like... I, I just... I don't know. After hearing that song, I was like, now nah, that ain't right. And, and I just preached a little bit in the comment section. But um, if, if no one agrees with me, then that's okay. That's their choice. Uh, I just... I just posted what I believed in the comment section. I wasn't saying anything bad about Kelly Clarkson or her song. I, I thought her song was okay. I just don't believe God didn't we God did create us just so we would die. That's that's not the truth. It, actually, I you could say that it doesn't matter. Kelly Clarkson doesn't believe in God anyway. I looked it up. She claims that she was. Uh, born into the Baptist religion, I think, or that she's a Christian or something like that. She says that she believes in God. Um, if you don't believe me, look it up for yourself. Just type in Clearly Clarkson's religion or religious beliefs and you'll see. Um, but I don't know. Uh, but that's just her personal opinion. Uh, and it's, it's my, per I just left my personal opinion in the comic section. I didn't mean anything bad about it. Anyway, I probably got really off topic there, but I just want to talk about uh, who God – or sorry, who Jesus really is. Jesus is the Son of God, and he came to die for our sins. He sacrificed himself so we may be able to accept him as our Lord and Savior and be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. And so – and we can repent of any sins that we may have committed in our lives – which everyone has sinned. The only one person who has never sinned was Jesus himself. He lived a life without sin. The only sin he ever had was our sin that was brought upon him when he sacrificed himself for us. So we need to remember that Jesus is superior. We just need to remember that. We, love, we need to love him, praise him, and worship him, and give time out of our day for the Lord. Because that's what Jesus and God will want us to do. We need to keep our, follow their word, keep their commandments. Otherwise, we'll end up in a place that we shouldn't. Or that we or end up in a place that... Hell. Basically hell. You don't want to go to hell. And... Uh, yeah, we just need to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and be there for him. Ask for forgiveness for his sins, repent, and try to live a holy life. Anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Uh, before I leave here today, I'm going to pray for those who want to be forgiven for their sins as I always do. Please repeat after me if you wish to be forgiven for your sins. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins before you this day. I denounce Satan and all his works. Jesus, I know that you died on a cross and rose again, and I thank you for it. 
Lord, please write our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray this to the Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. If you pray that simple prayer, and you meant it from the bottom of your heart, and you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you believe it and have faith, you will be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. Thank you all very much for watching. God bless you, and goodbye, everyone.